I've been strictly using the Apple Vision Pro for the past two weeks for productivity. And in this video, I'm going to let you know what I've learned and whether it's any good for productivity. I'm going to break this video down by how I used it, pros, cons, how it differs from just using a regular old Mac, and then my final thoughts. So let's jump right in. This intro intentionally left blank. Okay, so first, this is how I used the Apple Vision Pro. I used it for emailing, notes, researching on the web, using Safari, filling out forms on websites, and just general productivity. Okay, so now let's jump over to the pros and cons. And in this situation, I'm actually going to start off with the cons. So con number one that I found is that the eye tracking on a lot of websites just does not work very well. Like a good example is YouTube. If I look at the play button, if I look at, you know, wanting to skip forward in a video, if I'm wanting to click on certain videos, in particular, anything that's smaller text or a small button, it was just, really annoying. I would look at the play button, I would look at the pause button, and it, it would just never select it, or it would highlight as if it was selected, and then when I would click, it would pick something else, or it would jump 10 minutes into the video. So overall, I feel there just really needs to be an update so that when you're browsing the web, it's as easy and simple as, you know, looking on your phone or an iPad, because right now, unless the websites have a lot of just large, very clickable photos, it's very hard to browse on a website. So I think it's probably going to be a combination of improving the eye tracking on the Vision Pro to know when you're looking at something very tiny. But then also there's going to have to be updates on the website side of it, because I did notice that if you go to apple.com, then clicking on anything worked really well. It was really easy, but then going to other websites, it was just like a total mess, a total disaster to where I just decided to do that later and, you know, not mess with it at the time and or maybe even try it out on my phone. So that is to me a big con. The eye tracking in Safari on websites just needs a lot of improvement. But I will say it probably works 90% of the time, but that small 10% can just get really annoying, especially once you're trying to actually get some work done. Okay, so con number two is related to con number one, but here I do wanna let you know that during the past two weeks, I did use the Vision Pro with a keyboard because I'll just go ahead and say it now, without using a keyboard at least, it's just not very useful to, you know, do any sort of productivity because even though the, you know, looking at the keyboard and clicking works well, and it's kind of a similar speed as just texting on your phone, it's still just nowhere close to using a real physical keyboard. But to get back to con number two, I will say that, you know, fixing typos, whether you're typing in notes or you're typing in Safari or in, you know, a word processing document, things like that. Whenever you make a typo and type something and then you try to go back and look at a text and look at a word or look at a letter and select it to delete, to edit, to fix typos, again, the eye tracking just could not select individual words, individual letters so that you can fix things. And I find, found myself a lot of times looking at a word to fix, I click and it maybe selects the first word in the sentence or I click on it again and it picks a word that's you know one or two lines above or below but again you know I would say that similar to the web browsing you know it maybe worked 70 to 80 percent of the time but that small percentage that it didn't work it just kind of adds up and before you know it especially if you're busy and you're working and you're trying to get things done it's just very annoying when we're used to just you know having a keyboard and mouse, clicking on something, deleting it, fixing typos super quickly. And on here you click and it doesn't select the right item. So again, eye tracking really needs to be fixed when it comes to selecting small individual items like words or letters. And con number three for productivity. You know, when it comes to productivity, most of us work, you know, on websites and word processing and text documents, obviously, and Another thing that I found is really just more of a software issue with, you know, websites. And that is that on a lot of websites, whenever I would go to do something, for example, like upload a PDF to a website or upload a video file or, you know, open a window in a web browser, a lot of times that just 
did not work like at all. And the few times that I did have to switch over to my MacBook, it was simply because a window to say upload a PDF, I would look at it, click it, you would see it highlight, you would see it kind of flash that I was selecting it and absolutely nothing would happen. So I had to go over to my MacBook, upload a file, video, document, whatever that might be. And so there still seems to be, you know, a lot of compatibility issues with certain websites. When it comes to general browsing and all that stuff, it seems to be fine. But when it comes to selecting unique windows, there's still a lot of issues with that. But that's one of those cons that I expect to probably be fixed sooner than later, just by tweaking the website or by tweaking the Vision OS in some way or Safari. But regardless, still a con, still needs work. And my last con I will actually get to later because it, it's actually connected to how using the Vision Pro differs from using a MacBook or a Mac. So hang around for that and let's move over to the pros. Okay, so the first thing I'll say about the pros right off the bat is that they are all pure luxuries, which as most of us probably know, the Vision Pro right now isn't a necessity like an iPhone might be. These are all luxuries, but here they are. But just so you know, they are pure luxury. Okay, so pro number one, I will say that it is very nice to go from a 13 inch MacBook Pro, or even if you have a 20 inch desktop monitor, and then put on the Vision Pro and suddenly have these large windows, you know, Safari, Notes, email, things like that. And just having those windows right there, it is very luxurious, very nice. I did find that after using, you know, the Vision Pro and having these large windows in front of me and then switching over to my MacBook Pro, that the screen did seem absolutely tiny. And then also another little thing was just, you know, as we all know, the very glass, glossy screens on Macs, they're very reflective. And I just found that when I switched over, screen was small and it was very reflective. But again, that is very much a luxury. I don't necessarily think it's a deal breaker, but it is a very nice pro to have this kind of large environment to work in. And speaking of environments, the next pro is actually working in the environments and how nice that is. Basically because they just help you focus so much. Whenever you turn on an environment, it's just nice to be in a certain space. You have zero distractions around you. And in that case, it does help you work. It does help you be more productive compared to say, working on your laptop no matter where you are and you see all these things around you even if you're working from home you're constantly distracted by this or that or even the fact that you know your phone comes on and you have to pick it up and look at it so to me environment was one of those unexpected uh, pros that i like about the vision pro that it really helps you focus on whatever it is you're doing and now pro number three is actually for those of you that do a lot of traveling for work and that is that it's very great for travel. And that's because you can basically go anywhere, be on a plane or wherever, and you have, you know, this giant space to work in. And for productivity, that's great. You can simply pull out your keyboard, or if you do have a MacBook, do the Mac virtual display. And rather than having to be in kind of a cramped little screen right in front of you, you suddenly have all the space that you could possibly need. And also with the environment turned on, you're focused, you're comfortable, you have a lot of space to work. And to me, that is one of the biggest pros. Okay, and so the final pro is actually the fact that with the keyboard and, you know, I feel like I have thrown eye tracking under the bus at the beginning of this, but honestly, the eye tracking on the Vision Pro is actually pretty amazing, except when it comes to those websites and fine tuning text, like I mentioned earlier. But really, most of the time, that is probably one of the top pros is how well the eye tracking works, which, because of that, for this last pro, it basically means that I never found myself missing a mouse, missing a trackpad or anything like that. It was really great that I could just look at anything, click, it would select that object. And if I had to type, I would just use the keyboard. And before you knew it, I just kind of like, the Vision Pro disappeared, the interface disappeared, and I was just busy, I was working, I was being very productive. So something that was kind of a con before, is actually a pro in a lot of other ways. Okay, and so now on to the last con that I said I would mention at the end, because it is related to the question that I kept asking myself, and that's how does working on the Vision Pro and doing general productivity, how does that really differ from working on a MacBook or even on a desktop? And that con, this final con is price. 
And again, it all just came down to luxuries that, you know, I felt the, weren't justified with the price. And basically that means that, you know, how does it differ from working on the Vision Pro and a MacBook? Well, you simply have that luxury of bigger screens, the privacy, being focused, but then you have to ask yourself, okay, in terms of performance specs, the Vision Pro is the equivalent of an upgraded MacBook Air. And so are you really willing to spend $2,200, $2,300 more for those benefits? I'd say most people would say no, I would say no. And then when it comes to the desktop, uh, again, it's just luxuries of the mobility and, and you know, being able to do things like lay on the couch and work and move around and, you know, cool things that are great, but they're just luxuries. And when you talk about a desktop, you know, the difference is, yeah, $2,000 or so, it's still, you know, a good amount of money. And again, I would say most people who strictly do productivity, again, this is not a review of the Vision Pro as a whole, but I'm basically saying those that only do productivity, that are only buying them to work from home, you know, I think most people would not really want to spend the extra $2,000 or $2,500 for those luxuries. And that big con is really related to the price. Okay, so I wanted to pop in really quickly with this insert here and let you know that initially I wanted this review to be strictly about productivity using only the Apple Vision Pro. But then, you know, after showing it to a few people and getting feedback from, you know, other people who use the Vision Pro, I thought of the fact that, oh, I didn't mention anything really about Mac Studio Display or using it with the keyboard and Apple's trackpad. Now, again, again, I didn't mention this because I wanted this to be strictly about productivity using only the Vision Pro, but now I've changed my mind. I've had a change of heart. Okay, so first, Mac Virtual Display. All I have to say about that really is that I won't talk about this in regards to productivity because in my opinion, you know, if you're using your Vision Pro with Mac Virtual Display, or productivity, you know, I almost feel like it doesn't count because you're really just using your Mac. You're using your desktop or your laptop. So you're only mirroring your computer to the Vision Pro. So it's not really showing you what productivity is like on the Vision Pro with its user interface and all of that stuff. Yeah, there's a time and a place for that. And I think that's a great feature. I actually do use it a lot. And so really that's all I'm going to say about Mac Virtual Display. Um, and so now, as far as using it, using the keyboard and then Apple's trackpad, with this, I will say that it is very productive. It's very efficient. This is where it kind of works as pretty much as well as a MacBook Pro or a desktop for efficiency. But I will say that if you're using it strictly for productivity and you're having to use the keyboard and trackpad, most of the time, I'm still kind of questioning like, why would you use that over just your MacBook or a desktop for the most part? And does it give you any additional benefits, you know, by using the Vision Pro, especially with the fact that you're paying that extra 2000 plus dollars. So, you know, take that how you will. For me personally, if I was strictly doing productivity only, and I knew I would be using the keyboard and trackpad, even though it makes it much easier to use, much more efficient to use. I don't know if I would be willing to spend that much more money than say a MacBook Air or a MacBook Pro just to have a bigger window in front of me. So that's really all I'm going to say about the keyboard and the trackpad. Great, it's efficient, but there's still that question of price. So again, I just wanted to jump in, cut in and insert this very quickly. So let's just keep moving forward. And so in, as far as my final thoughts on it, when it comes to productivity, I would not recommend the Vision Pro. And that's just mainly for the price and mainly for what you're getting for the price, which are really, you know, these luxuries that you really don't need. And you could easily spend half that amount if you're splurging and buy a really nice MacBook Air, a really nice MacBook Pro, and maybe even, you know, a really nice external monitor. You know, you would be fine. You would be great. And you wouldn't also have to deal with those other little annoyances of the eye tracking not working and the websites not being up to date. Okay, so really for productivity, 
Is the Vision Pro any good? Yes, you can do productivity. I'm not necessarily saying it's horrible for it. Like I said, 80 to 90% of the time, it's great, it's fine, it disappears and you just get work done. So it is good for productivity, but I would put it more on the level of, you know, using a MacBook Pro when it's good or using an iPad when it's not so good, you know? I don't know if any of you have ever worked on an iPad, but it's, you know, a little clunky. You're typing on that weird on-screen keyboard. Some websites work, some websites don't, and it's just, a, you know, it has a little bit of clunkiness to it. That's kind of what it's for. So I would put this more in the category similar to an iPad of, can you do productivity on it? Yes, but, you know, kind of like an iPhone. I wouldn't sit there for three hours trying to get things done on an iPhone or an iPad. It's good for, you know, quick notes, quick emails, you know, quick researching, quick productivity stuff. But I really wouldn't say that you can sit there for, you know, all day long, three or four hours and do all sorts of things because you definitely will be a little less productive in some ways, hit those annoying stumbling blocks of the eye tracking. And for the price, it's just to me, not worth it. I think this points to the fact that the Vision Pro and the future of it is probably going to be meant for other things such as entertainment. So anyway, that's my two cents on it. Hopefully you found this helpful. Again, this is a new channel, more videos coming, like, subscribe, and I'll see y'all later.